Hello. Today I will be talking about diagnosing and treating frontal fibrosing alopecia and I will also talk a little bit about diseases which may coexist with frontal fibrosing alopecia. Let's go. Frontal fibrosing alopecia is a disease which is characterized by the regression of the frontal hairline. The average speed of regression is 1 mm per month. The range is from 0.3 to 1.5. I have seen a faster progression, but of course our aim is to stabilize the disease and then we have no progression at all. Frontal fibrosing alopecia may lead to near total or even total loss of scalp hair and eyebrows, especially if it is not treated. In FFA, three different patterns of hair loss have been identified. The linear type, the diffuse type, and the pseudo-fringe type. And it has been shown that the best prognosis is associated with the pseudo-fringe sign. What is the pseudo-fringe sign? The pseudo-fringe sign is the presence of some hairs which are still present in the original hairline. So there is a band of cicatricial alopecia between these few hairs and the hairline which we have currently. However, there will be some hairs left from the previous hairline. And if present, we call it the pseudo-fringe sign. Frontal fibrosing alopecia by definition is characterized by the regression of the frontal hairline. But there may be also loss in other areas, for example, in the temporal area and also in the occipital area. And it has been calculated that approximately one third of the patients will all also have a regression of the occipital hairline. Frontal fibrosing alopecia may be associated with the presence of facial papules and this is a sign of the involvement of the facial vellus hairs in the pathogenic process. And usually the vellus hairs will be lost in the early phase of the disease of FFA. Frontal fibrosing alopecia may also coexist with a rosacea and it has been calculated that over 20% of patients with frontal fibrosing alopecia will also present with rosacea. In men, the involvement of the beard area is quite common. Depending on the location, the involvement may be more or less prominent. The loss of the mustache in frontal fibrosing alopecia, similarly to the eyebrows, will start from the lateral side and it will progress towards the mid part of the face. Frontal fibrosing alopecia quite commonly coexists with lichen plano pilaris, but it may also coexist with lichen planus in other locations, especially with the mucosal lichen planus of the oral mucosa and of the gentle area. We make the diagnosis on the basis of the clinical appearance, but also trichoscopy may be very helpful. In trichoscopy, we will see mild peripheral scaling, some lonely hair. However, what is most correct Characteristic in frontal fibrosing alopecia is the lack of vellus hairs at the frontal hairline. This differs frontal fibrosing alopecia from androgenic alopecia, which may clinically look very similar. Trichoscopy will differ by the lack of the vellus hairs in frontal fibrosing alopecia and the presence of vellus hairs in androgenic alopecia. As mentioned before, the loss of eyebrows is a characteristic feature of frontal fibrosing alopecia, and it usually starts from the latter part of the eyebrows and will progress towards the mid part. It's been uh, shown recently that the loss of eyebrows may be a predictor of a less favorable response to therapy. In trichoscopy, when we look at normal eyebrows, they will always grow in one direction. However, in frontal fibrosing alopecia, because of the ongoing cicatricial process and because of the inflammation, the eyebrows will start growing in different directions. It has been called the signpost sign or the road sign where all the arrows point in different directions. If we have doubts, we can always take a biopsy and perform a histological examination. And usually the best area for taking a biopsy is an area at the hair bearing hairline, especially when there are several hairs with some peripheral or scaling. There are many treatments available for frontal fibrosing alopecia and probably every dermatologist will have her or his own preferences. But in general, the treatment is based on 
either one or both of two pilars. One of these pilars are treatments which inhibit the miniaturization of the hair follicles, and the other pilar are treatments which are anti-inflammatory and are intended to stop the inflammatory process. There are also some case reports of treatments which may show some potential for the future, but it is now too early to recommend these treatments for frontal fibrosing alopecia. One of them is methotrexate, and the other one is the group of JAK inhibitors. In conclusion, frontal fibrosing alopecia is characterized by the regression of the frontal hairline. It is approximately one millimeter per month in an untreated person. The occipital area is involved in over 30% of patients. The loss of the eyebrows and of the facial hair is a very common feature of the disease. Facial papules are a manifestation of the involvement of vellus hairs in the process of the disease, and in over 20% of patients, rosacea may coexist with frontal fibrosing alopecia. Trichoscopy may be helpful in performing the diagnosis, and the most typical finding will be the lack of vellus hairs in the frontal area. Other features include the perifollicular scaling and some other less common features. Regarding treatment, every doctor has his own or her own preferences and there are some emerging treatments which may give some hope for even more effective therapy in the future. Thank you very much. If you found this video useful, please consider leaving a note in the comment area. Thanks a lot. See you soon.